So next up, there's a presidential debate tonight, so I thought I would throw this in. Also, it ties in perfectly uh, for the sponsors of this video, I Trust Capital, and I've been talking about them for months. And the reason why I accepted what they had to offer was because I used their product. I believe in their product. I'll be using it for the next 20 years. <laughs> That's just, just how it is. So when I see this article and I see the complaints in it, I think to myself, why is everybody complaining? Because here's the thing, just because Biden might have a higher tax plan, does that mean that you're screwed over? No, it means you're screwed over if you're not proactive and you're just reactive. Do you think that Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and all the big money players out there, that they're just sitting around going, well, geez, I hope this guy doesn't get elected. Are you out of your mind? What they're doing is they're talking to all their accountants and their lawyers and everybody else like, how can I avoid all these taxes? Find me the way. Well, guess what? You don't need a bunch of accountants and lawyers. I'm going to show you exactly how to avoid the taxes, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But first, let's get into this article. So what's going on here? First up, U.S. presidential election is only 14 days away. Man, two weeks. Time moves fast. And a number of Bitcoin proponents have been discussing the capital gains tax implications Joe Biden plans to invoke if he wins the American presidency. So check this out. Capital gains will go from 21% to almost 40% for certain income brackets. That's important to remember. Two weeks ago, Donald Trump said, you know what, I'm going to cut long term down to 15%. Sure, you can try that. But uh, with all that quantitative easing everybody did, good luck not trying to get some kind of tax revenue. Anyhow, when people discuss the term capital gains tax, they're talking about the levy taken by the state when someone makes gains on the sale of any asset after the original purchase. Long-term capital gains apply to levies taken by the state after the asset is retained by the owner for more than 12 months. So that's true and false. So here's the thing. There's a video I did. I've been talking about this for quite some time. It's talking about how to avoid crypto taxes. So if you have a traditional IRA somewhere else or an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSP, or 457, then you can move them over tax and penalty free to a crypto IRA at iTrust. And just to be clear, you can't move your cryptocurrency it, that you presently have into the crypto IRA. It has to be something like this or cash. So just so you know, but what I did months ago was I sold a little bit of my profits from Ethereum and I put that in the cash and then I rolled that into my crypto IRA. And now I'm hoping that uh, I think I should be close to maxing out. So anyhow, onto the whole thing that they talked about as far as capital gains tax. So yes, capital gains tax, there are short term and long term. Short term, less than less than 12 months. Long term, more than 12 months, okay? But the thing is that there are state taxes, like what they just talked about. And I live in Texas, so I don't pay squat, which would be great, right? If that was the only case. In California, you're paying 10%. So that sucks. So that's a bummer. But what a bigger bummer is, is the federal capital gains tax. So I'll go over the short term, which is the worst one you can get. So it's all dependent on how you file. If you are if you file your taxes as single, head of household, marrying, filing jointly, marrying, filing separately. And it's all progressive, meaning it's based on how much you actually have it as an income or what you claim in your taxes. So for me, let's say I'm head of household, hey, and then I made, I don't know, 14,000 last year, right? So I'm going to pay 12% in short-term capital gains because, hey, I don't make that much, so don't tax me so much, right? Now, if I make more, if I make between 84,160, I'm gonna get taxed at 24%. So remember, it is progressive. So it's not like once I reach $84,201 exactly, bam, everything 24%. No, it's just it's just on a, on a step scale, 10%, then 12, then 22, and 24, depending on what you make, okay? That's short-term, anything less than a year. Long-term, a little bit easier. So if you're, let's say you're single and you make, I don't know, 40,000, let's say you make 200,000, you make $200,000 that year, you're, you're between 39,000 and 430, you're going to pay 15% of total. Let's say it's a real bummer and uh, you make a boatload of money, you're going to pay tax on 20%. So you're probably thinking to yourself right now, well, who cares? Because guess what? I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be, a, I'm going to make so much money in cryptocurrency, which you, hey, I'll be honest with you, you probably will make a lot of money. But here's the problem. Let's say you make $2 million, okay? You make $2 million, you're like, great, cash out, bam, done. Uh, what's 20% of $2 million? That's like $400,000. Do you think it's fair that you have to pay $400,000 on your all your hard work that you did to invest? Well, that's what's going to happen unless you're proactive. So in this video about no crypto taxes, I talk about what I did, which is 
moving your cryptocurrency into a IRA. There's three types I talk about in this one, or excuse me, traditional SEP and Roth IRA. And it's either you're going to pay taxes now or you're going to pay taxes later. Me personally, I'd rather pay the taxes that I get right now. Let's say that I make 20,000 a year and I get taxed 10%. Okay, I pay $2,000 in taxes. I roll the rest into Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, EOS, everything else I really want to, that I can do it on iTrust. And then when they go to $10 million, well, guess how much I have to pay in taxes? Zero, bupkis, nada, zero, zilch. Because I chose a Roth IRA. Now, to get the differences, again, just check out this video or take a look in the description of every one of my videos. There's a link, it looks just like this. You click on that link, it'll take you to iTrust Capital. It's got all the information that you want over there as well. If you have any questions, which I did myself, I just scheduled a call and I sat down with those guys for an hour and they answered all my questions, which is great to actually talk to a real life person. If you use the link in the description below, it's gonna give you 30 days for free. So check that out. And again, I wanna say I'm very happy with iTrust Capital. I'm glad they're a sponsor and I can't wait to work with them for the next 20 years. So back to the article, let's talk about the minutia. So here's what we got. And this is one of those things that I think about when I read it and I was like, why is this even an issue? If you would have been a little bit more proactive as opposed to reactive. And this is what I'm talking about. Make sure that you get things set up. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So this was a quote from an individual on Twitter. They state, hey, Biden wants to raise the capital gains tax significantly. This screws over the majority of seniors who live on fixed income. That's very debatable because I'm going to tell you right now, um, when I was working as a nurse in home health care, I saw low income, fixed income senior citizens because that was our primarily our demographic. And I can tell you, capital gains tax above 400000 didn't affect these people. But I get what they're saying as far as a fixed income. If you have a fixed in income and it does reach back below, below 400000 sure, I understand. But again, it's a, it all comes down to were you proactive or were you reactive to what's going on? Are you a Warren Buffett, Bill Gates type of person where you're like, you know what, I'll figure it out now as opposed to figure it out later. Or are you something like, you know what, I'm just gonna wait for the government to tax the hell out of me and then I'll figure it out. Well, good luck. Anyhow, he states it also impacts anyone taking profits from Bitcoin or any investment for that matter. We just talked about how you can avoid those things. According to Biden's tax plan, the long-term capital gains taxes for individuals to make a million per year or above will increase from 21 to 39.6%, which we just looked at, it could be up to even more, just depends on short-term versus long-term capital gains tax, plus what states you live in. And it states media outlets try to claim that the income bracket proposal is concrete. The Biden tax plan is not 100% set in stone. This is what I'm talking about. Biden could say, I want 40%, but then they come back and you know what? We're going 50. You know what? We're gonna go 60%. And then where is everybody? So do I think that's gonna happen? No. Can it happen? Probably not, but hey, I mean, hey, anything's possible. So the thing I'm trying to get through is make sure that you are planning ahead and it's not like you're beholden to the government. You are smarter than that. You can do things, you can make plans and you can get yourself out of your own messes or out of these messes, excuse me. So finishing up, there was a recent report that notes that Biden has repeatedly said that the increased taxes and capital gains hike will not affect certain income brackets, uh, people under 400,000 to 1 million, but again, uh, that could all change. So you never know. The report also implies that Biden's tax proposal has not yet been tailored to meet that objective. The fact of the matter is Americans cannot take any politicians' promises seriously, and Biden can change the capital gains requirements on a whim. Yeah, who believes in, in uh, politicians? You know, they're a bunch of liars. <laughs> is, that, is that like a secret to anybody? Of course they're all liars. That's how they're, they're politicians. They're supposed to be. Meanwhile, a team of Goldman Sachs analysts led by Arjun Menon wrote a note to investors saying that Biden's capital gains hike could also spark a massive stock sell-off. Goldman's investors note detailed that the last time the capital gains taxes were increased in 2013, it fueled a massive 100 billion stock sell-off. There's a couple ways to look at that. Um, if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you know that I do not care about dips. I do not care how deep it goes. I know exactly where it's going. Well, not exactly. I know where the trajectory is. I, don't, I can't give you uh, precise numbers. Obviously, nobody can because nobody knows Radamus. However, if we saw a hundred billion sell-off in our market, I would be super happy because guess what? That means all the people that are weak hands anyhow are selling. And if they're selling, guess what I'm doing? I'm buying. So do you think the same people that know the exact same things that we do, aren't gonna do the same thing in the traditional stock market. They're like, yeah, go ahead and sell it all. We don't care. Guess what? We're gonna buy it up 
because we know how to be proactive instead of reactive. We know how to get around these taxes. We have people in place, and we're just waiting for you suckers to sell. Now, I could be wrong, but let me know what you think in the comments section. And then to uh, the last piece that says here is that uh, just remember that Trump doesn't like Bitcoin. The individual said Biden will probably raise taxes on capital gains. I don't know. And that's true. Donald Trump uh, is not a big fan of cryptocurrencies. In 2019, he states, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and crypto, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Well, it's a good thing that's not paid for by the U.S. dollar, huh? And again, on the flip side of that, you could look at Biden and go, well, he's going to raise taxes. Again, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter either way who's who's put into place for cryptocurrency digital assets. Make sure that you're prepared and you know what to do. So again, I'm going to link this, this video in the very end of this video. And you can check that out. Also, don't forget about the link in the description. Thanks to iTrust Capital. And that is it for today. So thanks for sticking with me through the end. I know it's a lot of information, but a lot of good stuff's happening these days. I just want to give a random shout out to people uh, just for being members. Uh, I just want to say thanks to uh, Sean Black, Ignacio Mella, David, Dr. Rusk, Brian Pryor, Jesse Kirkland, Sebastian, uh, Marguerite Bonnet, Dad Bean, Modern Samurai, who's always making fun of my pink salmon shirt. It's a good shirt, I will tell you that. Grant Sharman, Jarky Bajurgason, I have nailed it. And Noel Flippin' Vegas and Kate Mont. So thanks so much for being members, really appreciate it. If you like those videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up. One's gonna be the one we just talked about as far as avoiding crypto taxes. And the other one, I'll let YouTube do their magic. But that's it, thanks for sticking with me, I appreciate it. See ya on the next one.